need somebody who is very, very brave, who is very unafraid, very unscared, especially a very steady hand, very um, gentle when handled. No, never mind. Um, so my next victim, I mean, volunteer. I'll let you volunteer. Come on. What? Okay. So I have a I have a box. Yeah. I have a box. 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 Slowly. Sudden movements are really bad, okay? So, yeah, dangerous. Spread your hands out a little bit. Okay, very, I'm going to sit on your lap. Hold on, hold on, don't touch it. Don't touch it because it might be there. Okay. Very, very gently and very slowly. Okay, don't, don't pull your hand back real quick when you touch something because that could be bad for you. So, very slowly put your hands in. Yeah, okay, very gently. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Right <laughs> okay, very gentle. <laughs> okay, okay, don't don't pull your hands out really quick. I told you you have to be very, very gentle. Don't no quick movements. No quick movements. Okay, tell me what have you touched it yet? Okay, you've touched it. Have you touched it like enough to know what it is? Okay, you gotta touch it some more because that's the whole point of this game. Alright, put your hand in more. Yeah, you have to figure out what it is. Is it an animal? It's what? A spider? Heavens no, I am not putting a spider in this box. I would sneak. Uh, maybe not. Does it oh, bite? A lizard. That's a good guess. I'm gonna give you one more chance to put your hands in there and make one more guess. Are we seeing a lizard or a snake? Okay, take the blindfold off. It's a snake. Okay, so she thinks it's a lizard or a snake. Are you ready? Okay, don't listen. Really, be very calm. It's a snake. Be very calm. It's a snake. Okay, do not no. Don't everybody jump up at one time. Okay, be very calm. Oh wait, wait, wait! I don't even know how to open it. Shush, shush, shush! You're gonna scare me. Stop! You're gonna scare it. Okay, ready? It was a lizard. No, it wasn't a lizard. It was a snake. No one was snake either. What is it? Christmas, Christmas bows. Just kidding. Okay, I got you. Let's go. I want to be a snake. You know I'm not touching a snake. You know that. So, the, the whole point, though, listen. The whole point is that it can be that can be scary, right? But I told her if she stayed calm and she trusted me, that everything would be fine, right? But it was still kind of scary. It was still frightening. Did you trust me? Did you think that I was gonna stick a snake or a spider in that box? No. Yes. No. You should trust me. Or I thought it was a rabbit. You should trust me. All right, so. At some point in your life, even though your life may have been short to this point, at some point you've been in a situation similar to this, right? Where you were unsure. You weren't sure what was going to happen. You weren't sure what was going to be in the box. You weren't sure what was going to happen tomorrow. Or you, you were very, um, that can cause feelings of what? What kind of feelings does that make you feel when you're unsure? Nervousness, that's a good one. Anxiousness, yes. What else? Say it again. Oh, well, maybe. Petri yeah, you might be petrified. What about in situations where you don't know what's going to happen? You don't really know how you're going to get through it. Have you ever been in a situation like that? Like you look at the situation and you can't, you have no idea how you're going to get past it. Maybe it's a big test, right? You have a big test to study for and you have no idea. You do not have a clue how you're going to get through it. Maybe you did something wrong. Maybe you lied. You told a lie. And you have no idea how you're going to fix it. Have you ever been in a situation similar to that? You're just not sure? 
Well, we might wonder in those situations, like when, we do, when we've done something bad, when we've lied, or when we've done something that we know is going to make our parents upset, we might wonder if God is still with us and if God still cares about us. Have you ever wondered that, maybe? So no one wants to feel like that, but what's the alternative? What is the alternative to feeling like you don't know what to do? What is, it, what is the opposite of that, of being unsure? What would the opposite of that be? Well, another word. Confidence. Yeah, confidence. You could be confident. And so the writers of the Bible were inspired to include all kinds of moments to show what we should do when we're kind of feeling unsure. So let's get right into our story for today, all right? Our story for today is all about Mary. Who is Mary? Who is the most famous Mary that we know? Jesus' mother. Do you think Jesus' mother? God's son, Jesus, right? Do you think that Mary ever felt unsure? Maybe. Let's see. All right, so some of you may have heard a lot about Mary, and you may be able to tell the story of Mary as easily or better even than I can. So we're going to stop along the way sometimes, and I'm going to ask you some questions, and y'all are going to be able to answer A, B, C, or D, okay? So we're going to take a little quiz today. All right, so the first thing that we know for sure about Mary is that Mary was from a small town called, anybody know? This is not on the quiz. No, no. Nazareth, and Nazareth was in Galilee. And the thing that we know about Nazareth is that it wasn't very special. Like, no famous rappers were from Nazareth, no good famous chefs, nobody popular, and there were no big, nice skating rinks. There was nothing great to draw the people to come to Nazareth. So it was really just kind of common. But so was Mary. There was really nothing glamorous about Mary. The Bible really doesn't tell us very much before um, the angel comes to visit her. And so the first question is this right here. Mary was not very special. So there was nothing awesome and amazing about her. But we do know that she was engaged to marry a man named Blaine. Don't yell it out. Nobody wants to blurt out. Okay. So was Mary engaged to marry Larry? Was she engaged to marry Joseph or Moses? Or was it Randall the magician? If you think it was... Larry, touch your ear. If it's Joseph, touch your nose. If it's Moses, touch your eye. If you think it's Randall the magician, touch your mouth. Okay, so everybody thinks that it was Joseph. That's correct, yeah. So it wasn't Randall the magician, unfortunately, because that would have been kind of cool. But it was Joseph. Mary was engaged to marry a man named Joseph. And God had promised a very long time ago that the Savior of the world, right? We know that God spoke to prophets and the prophets told the people on earth things about the Savior, the Messiah. And he said that the Messiah was going to come from the lineage of, does anybody know that one? David. David, King David, right? That meant lineage means family. So we knew that, that he was going to come from the lineage of David and it just so happens that Mary and Joseph were in whose family? King David. That's right, King David. So there was a prophecy that was fulfilled right there. And even though Mary and Joseph, does anybody know what Joseph did for a job? Yeah, he built things, right? So Mary was not super famous for anything. Joseph was just a regular old carpenter guy. They were both from the lineage of David, but what do we know? They turn out to be what? Jesus' Jesus parents. The Savior of the world's parents. Two regular folks. Maybe people like your mom and dad, right? Not, they're not famous rappers. I don't think we have any famous YouTubers in here. No, no famous YouTubers. Okay. So one day, though, an angel named... Anybody know? Gabriel. Gabriel. Good. Y'all know this story. An angel named Gabriel came to visit Mary, and he said... Let's read it. Do we have Luke 1, 33, 33? Okay, so I have to put myself in this position because I'm pretty average. 
I'm engaged to be married to a dude that just like builds bookshelves for a living. We're living a pretty normal life, right? All of a sudden, an angel comes down. An angel. An angel. This was not common. Okay? An angel comes down and says, do not be afraid. Why do you think that was the very first thing that the angel said? Why would have that been the very first thing that the angel Gabriel says to Mary? Why do you think? I think she was very afraid. Obviously, she was probably terrified. Maybe even petrified, like frozen. She was so afraid, right? And so the angel says, Mary, do not be afraid. Because God is very pleased with you. God is very, very happy with you. And she heard this, and she's probably thinking through her mind as, as Gabriel is telling her these things, this sounds really familiar. Like, I think I've heard the people in town talking about a prophet named Isaiah that said something about Jesus sending a Savior, and he was going to be in the lineage of David, and... Gosh, me and Joseph are both from the lineage of David. And an angel just came to see me. This could be me. And I you think that she ran around hollering and telling everybody that she was about to carry and, no. and give birth to God's son? Do you think that's what she did? No. I don't really think so. I don't really think so. Um, so can you imagine? Talk about life being unexpected. But when Mary heard this, she might have remembered the words of a prophet who spoke about a child being born who would be called the Prince of Peace. That's one of the many names of Jesus. But let's see, who was the prophet that talked about the Prince of Peace? I may have already given this away. I did. Okay, was it Zebediah, Bob McDonald, Paul, or Isaiah? Just laugh, Bob McDonald. That's awesome. All right, what do we think? Everybody shout this one out. B. Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah was the prophet. That's right. Isaiah was the prophet. And so this is what Isaiah had said many, 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 many years before. This is Isaiah 9-6. Do we have that one? Yeah. It, a girl in this section right here who wants to read it. This is like you got to read it with some mm, like some mm, deep. Let's hear it. A child will be born unto us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us. He will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father who lives forever and Prince who brings peace. Isaiah 9, 6. Yes, a child will be born. So look at all these things that he says that God will be called. Wonderful advisor, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father. What does it mean to be everlasting? Forever and ever and ever. Does it mean for a little ever? No, it means forever and ever and ever. Good. Okay, so then it goes on. Luke 1, verse 34 says, even though this was incredible news, Mary wasn't too sure. The Okay, let's, let's rewind. The angel came down to Mary. It wasn't a voice that she heard. It wasn't a book that she read. An angel came down in front of her eyes and told her these things. And what does the Bible say that Mary still felt? Unsure. Mary was unsure. Mary was unsure. Even though she knew these things about the Son of God, and even though that Gabriel, the angel, had told her this, it says that Mary was still unsure, and she even asked, how can this happen? How can this happen? And so Gabriel explained that because of God's Holy Spirit. And so what seems impossible to us is never impossible to us with God, right? What seems impossible for us is never impossible for God. And Gabriel actually told Mary some other news when he met with her. He told her about her cousin. Y'all should remember this because we talked about Mary's cousin last week. What was Mary's Elizabeth. cousin's name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yes, right here. It wasn't Ursula. It wasn't Ruth. It was Naomi. It was Naomi. Yeah, it was Elizabeth. And so Gabriel told Mary that Elizabeth, who was very old, by the way, even though they were cousins, they were not like the same age. Elizabeth was very old. And Gabriel told Elizabeth, hey, I mean, Gabriel told Mary, hey, your cousin, you know, Elizabeth, she's going to have a baby too. And this seemed impossible because Elizabeth was so old, but Mary was so excited. So the first thing she did was she went home, she packed her bags, and she ran off to see Elizabeth. And she stayed with Elizabeth. And the Bible even tells us that as soon as Mary got to Elizabeth, 
And the baby in Elizabeth's belly heard Mary's voice, it jumped. So it knew God had made these things happen. All right, so um, while Mary was at Elizabeth's house, Mary obviously tells Elizabeth what has happened, and together they rejoice. And it says in Luke 1, 38, we have that one, yeah, it says, I serve the Lord, Mary answered, may it happen to me just as you said it would, and then the angel left, okay? So that then, then Mary packed her stuff and she went on, and while she was at Elizabeth's house, Mary did some writing. So let's see, what do you think that Mary wrote while she was staying with Elizabeth? Do you think Mary wrote a song, a poem, a recipe for awesome cinnamon rolls? <laughs> yes, yes. Or do you think she wrote both parts of a rap battle? That would be very difficult. If Mary could have done that, <laughs> that would have been fantastic. Okay, so what do we think? Do we think that she wrote a song, a poem, a recipe for cinnamon rolls? Or both parts of a rap battle. C. C. She actually wrote a song. A lot of songs, though, start out as poetry, so I can kind of see where you would think. Yeah, but no, she actually wrote a song. And so um, in Luke, this is kind of lengthy. Luke, um, this was what Mary's song said. It said, My soul gives glory to the Lord. My spirit delights in God, my Savior. He has taken note of me, even though I am not considered important. From now on, all people will call me blessed. The Mighty One has done great things for me. His name is holy. He has brought me down rulers from their thrones. He, But he has lifted up people who are not considered important. He has helped the people of Israel who serve him. He has always remembered to be kind to Abraham and his children down through the years. He has done it just as he promised to our people of long ago. So that's a pretty good song, right? It's, it's, got, right. it's got some meaning. No, not all songs rhyme, though. Poems, maybe rhyme, but not all songs. So Mary, the Bible tells us that Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months, and then she went back to Nazareth, um, knowing now, being more confident in her faith, that God would be with her. So I guess the whole point of this story and how it applies to us right now is that Mary had every right to be scared. Don't you think? She had every right to be afraid. I mean, let's just think about all the things that Mary had to think about to be afraid of. The first one I, I would think that she would have been scared of was, number one, an angel just came down. Okay, like that would be like seeing a ghost. That would be frightening. But past that, she had the fear of being a first-time mom. The fear of having a baby and going through labor and carrying this child, right? But I think probably what would have been even more scary than that is the fear. She's about to be Jesus' mother. Can you imagine feeling that kind of pressure? That's scary. I mean, what if she did something wrong? What if she spanked him for something he didn't really do? What if she put him in time out and it was something that a neighbor really did? The neighbor left the gate open and the donkey ran out and it wasn't really Jesus' fault, but she put Jesus in time out. I mean, come on. Like, that would be terrible. It's Jesus. Yes. So the thing, though, is that Mary had the right to be afraid. She was unsure. So do we. We have that same, we have those same fears. We have the same concerns. It may not be exactly what Mary was feeling, but... I'm sure everybody has had that time when they felt unsure, unsteady, worried. We're going into a time at Christmas that should be fun and exciting, but sometimes it's, it's a little scary. It's a little scary to go to your Aunt Joyce's house and know that 10 people are going to pinch your cheek and want to give you kisses. That's scary. You're unsure. It's unsure sometimes when your family has changed. Maybe your family's going to look a little different this year when you get together. And by look, I don't mean like Uncle Charles lost a little weight. I mean, somebody might not be there that was there last year. And that's scary. How's, how, how are mom and dad going to react to that? How, how's everybody going to act? How are they going to feel? How am I going to feel about that? What's that going to be like? And that's okay to feel that way. But the one thing that we have to remember is that God is always with us in those times of fear and uncertainty. 
even if we doubt where he is, we always know that he's with us. And all we have to do is call on his name and, and to ask him to give us that confidence and to give us that certainty in our hearts to know that it's going to be okay, that God's going to take care of us, right? So as we go into our time of worship and our time of small group, I just want you to think about those things, and you're going to talk with your leader a little bit about how we can enter into this Christmas season and, and all of our get-togethers with our families and maybe even after Christmas of just being confident and knowing that God is with us, that he's not given us something that he's not prepared to support us in and to provide us with everything that we need to make it through that, okay? All right, let's bow our heads and close our eyes for prayer real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you so much. God, that you put characters and, and not even characters, but real people, God, into the Bible, into the stories of the Bible, that even as a child that we can relate to, God, that we can understand that Mary was scared and afraid and facing a situation that was just too much even to think about at times, God, but that you show us through your word that we can, we can rely on you and that we can find our confidence in you. God, I just pray that as these students enter into Christmas, Lord, that you remind them that you are always there. Even if you don't send an angel Gabriel to tell them that, that it's okay and to not be afraid, that you can make them feel that in their hearts, God. And I just pray that you'll go with all of us as we enter a time of worship. God, that we will remember the reason why we're here and certainly the reason why we celebrate Christmas. We just ask all these things in your name. Amen.